Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time around, I want to do a supplement to my first look review for the Nikon 800PF. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can click the card above to take a peek. In this video, I'm going to share a selection of images from the 800PF and talk about how I used the new lens to get the shot. I'll discuss any advantages it gave me and how it performed in real-world field use. I sometimes think that kind of information is actually more valuable than the review itself. Before we begin, let me set the scene and talk about the scenario we ended up facing. We only had the lens for a brief time, an afternoon and a couple of hours the next morning. However, the afternoon was dark, cloudy, and rainy, and we were washed out a couple of times in absolute downpours. I think during the worst of it, I could have almost swam back to the parking lot. The rain was just that heavy. The next morning didn't see much rain, but was overcast for most of our shoot. Plus, we had to get lots of B-roll, we had to spend time going over the lens, in all, I think we were only out looking for wildlife and shooting for probably a total of five to six hours. But thankfully, we found a lot of birds when we were able to shoot. So between the low light levels, the downpours, and limited time, we certainly faced some challenges. However, I think it worked out well, and despite the obstacles, I feel like I have a good sense of the lens and what it can do. With that in mind, let's take a look at some photos. So I'm going to present these photos in order. The first thing that we found as we were searching, the first thing that was good anyhow, was this little green heron, and you can see he's kind of down in the lily pads. When I see a subject like that, what I want to do is I want to get really low with them. I love shooting those low ground level shots. However, with bigger glass, especially like a 600 f4 and a teleconverter, it's really difficult to manage that stuff, especially when you want to get lower than maybe a tripod can allow you to go. So in this case, I was able to hand hold this 800 PF. I just kind of got it right off the ground and I flipped up the screen on the Z9, I went into auto AF, I kind of pre-focused on the bird manually so that the camera wouldn't struggle, sometimes it can in those situations when there's a lot of distractions, and then I let subject detection, eye detection basically take over, it got on the eye, and I just held the camera down there and focused and shot. Now the nice thing about this 800PF versus something larger is that it was much, much easier to handle this. Whenever you're in an awkward position and you have that lens down low, it can be very difficult sometimes to stay on the subject and to just you know physically handle that lens, especially if you have a kind of an awkward position and it takes a while for the bird to, I don't know, turn his head the right direction. Sometimes they're looking directly away from you for a long time and you're, you can get fatigue really easily there. And this lens made it very, very easy to do it. The other thing that was nice here, if you notice the shutter speed, what is it here? 1 640th of a second relatively low for a handheld 800 millimeter that's kind of stretched out in front of you. But the VR system in this lens is just so good that even at slower shutter speeds, I can hand hold this thing. And honestly, that's kind of a game changer to me. The other thing here I like about this photo, and I said this in the review video, is I just love the rendering of this lens. I like the way the foreground, middle ground where it's sharp, and then the background, all that just, it kind of blends so nicely. And as I said before in the other video, I kind of almost feel like sometimes this lens gets almost a dreamy quality to those out of focus areas, and I really like the way it rendered here. Next we have this glossy ibis, and he was really cool. We were walking down the trail, and he kind of flew up, but he just hovered there. And according to the timestamps on my photos, he was hovering for at least 30 seconds. But when he started hovering, I actually had to back off a little bit because the 800 was almost a little bit too long. And I needed to change my settings too to 3200 of a second because you want a little faster shutter speed, even with a bird that's hovering, especially this one in particular. When you have these longer neck birds and they hover, their neck kind of does a karate chop in the air. And if you don't have enough shutter speed, you're going to end up having a problem with motion blur on the face and the eye. And you don't want that, of course. So I cranked up the shutter speed. It put the ISO pretty high, as you can see. But... Fortunately, I was filling the frame, and when you're filling the frame, thanks to things like 800 millimeter lenses, it makes it easier to use things like noise reduction and get good results. Where you get into trouble is when you're not filling the frame and using those same kind of ISOs. But in any event, he hovered there, and I was just firing away. I was using the wide, small AF area and just kind of kept it on his face as good as I could and just, you know, blasted away for 30 seconds on and off as he kind of ratcheted back and forth. When he wasn't facing the camera, I let off, let the buffer catch up. But overall, the 800 was really nice here for a variety of reasons. First, of course, it's really, really sharp. And I also really like the background rendering in this one. As you can see, it looks soft. It looks nice behind it. And the subject really pops off. It seems very three-dimensional to me. You have that super sharpness from the lens mixing with that soft background. It really makes images pop and gives you that nice 3D look. And the fact that it was light-ish for the size and very maneuverable, very fast to use, 
really made the shot a lot of fun to get. Now, I'm not saying I couldn't have done this with a 600 F4. I definitely could have if I had the 600 F4 and the teleconverter, same distance and all that. Uh, 800, you know, probably, but that is a 10 pound lens. But overall, this lens just makes it a little bit easier, I think. And by the way, one of the things that people wonder about is like shutter speeds with long glass and VR when you mix all that together. And I had put this on VR Sport and I basically just left it there all day because I didn't see any degradation as far as using those faster shutter speeds with VR. And my images seem to confirm that. I don't see any VR softness from using the lens at some of these higher shutter speeds that I use throughout the day there. So that's another little feather in its cap. So anyhow, let's move on. Next, we have this wet red-shouldered hawk. And this guy's really cool. I guess he hangs around the parking lot there at Orlando Wetlands where we were shooting pretty frequently. And he's very habituated. He's not real afraid of people at all. And he allowed us a very close approach as you can see in this photo. Now, truth be told, this is a, about a DX crop. I was able to get pretty close to him, but I didn't like the crop that I had. And I was gonna try to get another couple of steps. And then he saw a lizard and you know, lunch is more important than his portrait and off he went. However, in the meantime, I did pop off a few shots at the range that I was, and then I just cropped it down to this. It worked out pretty well. But the advantage here of shooting that 800 PF, there's a few of them here. First, I didn't have to use a tripod. And the nice thing about approaching an animal with just a lens and not a tripod is your profile is much smaller. When you're approaching an animal and you have this big tripod and you start moving the tripod and the camera and the lens and all that stuff on top of it, you're presenting a very big profile to the animal. It can look a little bit scary to them and I think they're more apt to fly. Now conversely, just to put it out there to be fair, if you're photographing an animal and you're not moving, you're just kind of stationary and there's a tripod there, sometimes I think that actually puts the animal a little bit more at ease because there's something between the animal and you know what it perceives as maybe a threat. And it's also breaking up your outline a little bit. So tripods are kind of a give and take. In this case though, since I was actively approaching him, I definitely am glad that I did not have the tripod. Now, the other thing here I'm very impressed with is the sharpness. As you can see, this is just ridiculously sharp. This lens is pin sharp. And I've been very, very impressed with the sharpness. And you can clearly see it in this photo here. Just you know, every little feather detail. I can see reflections and eyeballs. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Really, really happy with the sharpness I'm seeing from this lens. And the final thing is the background. If you have a close subject with a background that's even a little bit distant, my gosh, it just absolutely turns it to butter. You can see that here. Just this nice smooth green background behind him. So... So all of that stuff worked out really, really well. And the other nice thing with this 800 PF is its narrow field of view in a situation like this. Because there were trees behind him, but there were also other areas where there were pockets of light and I didn't want bright spots coming through. 800 millimeter has such a narrow field of view that it's very easy to kind of just take a step one way or the other and eliminate like distractions in the background or bright spots in the background and just get that nice solid green that you see here. So anyhow, after he ate his lizard, he then flew off to another perch. So let's take a look at that photo. And I think I actually like this one better. I love the Spanish moss that you see in there. I love that he's all wet, but one of the places here where the 800 PF came in handy was the weight. One of the things that I was trying to do or hoping to do was get a nice expression and I ended up having him looking at the camera. But the thing is, I had to wait for that. That doesn't just happen. He didn't look through the camera. I didn't go, oh, good, you know, boom, I'm going to get the shot. That's not what happened. The way it works is that you look through the viewfinder the entire time and he looks everywhere but the camera. And then finally, maybe he looks towards you. And Anyone who's done wildlife photography for more than like, I don't know, five minutes, you realize real quick that if you look away from that viewfinder, what happens? The animal does exactly what you wanted it to do the second you look away. So in this case, again, no tripod. So I had to handhold this lens. I'm holding onto this lens and I'm waiting for him to turn towards the camera. Thankfully, this lens is lighter and better balanced than my 600 F4e because if I had to handhold that 600 F4 for as long as it took him to look at the camera, I would have been shaking like a leaf or I would have had to put it down. And yeah, as you know, that would be when he would look at the camera and I'd miss the shot. So with the 800, the lighter weight and the better balance certainly made a difference here. And again, the sharpness and rendering, I think, is just outstanding. I hope you're not getting too sick of hawks because I think this is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it's a juvenile. And he was nearby and he came in and just kind of landed on a palm. So I thought, well, I'm gonna, you know, now that this other, I'm done with the other red-shouldered hawk, I'll go get a few pictures of this little guy. So I walked over that way and was able to get some nice shots of him. And again, it's the same situation. In this case, there's a couple things going on. First, again, I'm waiting for him to do something interesting. In this case, he was calling every now and then. So I had to keep my eye at the viewfinder and hold that lens up the entire time. And again, it was very manageable with the 800 PF as opposed to something like my 600 F4 and teleconverter. So that was nice. The other thing, if you notice the shutter speed here is only 3 20th of a second. 
And the reason for that is because I was messing around with VR, and this is where I figured out I could go down as low as 200th of a second and get a sharp photo. So I was messing around with VR, and when I started seeing him call, though, I knew that 200 wasn't going to be enough when his, you know, with his beak moving, so I wanted to make sure it was sharp. So I bumped it up to 320, and in this case, it worked out really well. He's you know absolutely tax sharp. But still, 3 20th of a second with an 800 millimeter lens handheld, you know, basically for a long duration. So, oh, and another side note here is that when I'm hand holding this, I'm just standing there. I wasn't braced for this hawk. I'm shooting 1 200th of a second and getting perfectly sharp images. And obviously, you can see here 1 3 20th, perfectly sharp images. And I'm hand holding it without any support. I'm not leaning on something. I'm not, you know, braced up against anything. It's just the VR system in this lens is really good. And again, you know, great rendering, great sharpness. I keep saying that, but yeah, you keep seeing it. So anyhow, that's kind of the story with that guy. Next, we have this great blue heron, and he's just sitting there kind of preening himself. But I really like the way this image came together. We saw him over at Merritt Island Wildlife Refuge on Black Point Drive, and he was in this real pretty grassy, reedy area. And, you know, with the overcast light, everything was soft. It really looked dramatic. And, we, I, you know, I got out of the car, and... Part of the problem there is that right along the edge, there's a lot of weeds. It's kind of difficult to maneuver. And trying to get a tripod into that situation is very, very difficult. But I wanted to get a little bit lower, as low as I could get, and you know, kind of get as eye level as I could with him. And thankfully, I was able to do that pretty rapidly because this was one of the first shots I got of this guy from that position. So had I had to mess with a tripod, I, I guarantee I would have missed this shot. But it was nice to be able to handhold that lens, get down into like a really tight, very awkward position and comfortably hold that lens and to be able to get a shot like this. And again, I really, this is, I think one of my favorites with this lens. I really like everything about it. It's got a nice kind of triangle dynamic with the bird and it has a nice little S curve there along his neck and that nice reflection. So, and he, and he's just a gorgeous great blue heron and that helps too. It always helps when your subjects are good. But again, that lens really made it easy to get into position very rapidly and not have to worry too much about shutter speed. In this case, I was at 800th of a second because I was concerned. I really was in awkward position. I was not holding it very steadily at all. And, you know, absolute, every one of these was like pin sharp. It was absolutely great. So once again, uh, I, I say I'm seeing a lot of advantages to this lens. Next, we have this spoon build. And we found these guys flying around with some egrets and herons and that uh, kind of towards the end of our first day. And if you look at this shot, you'll see that shutter speed was 1 800th of a second. So I kind of made a mistake, but I kind of want to talk about why I think the 800 PF may have helped me here a little bit. First, size. Obviously, lighter, smaller, easier to manage than had I shot this with a 600 F4 and a teleconverter, or if I owned an 800 5.6, had I shot it with something like that, a 10 pound lens. So I think the size and the weight helped in my panning there, so I wasn't struggling with a big piece of glass. Also, though, I think the VR system helped here too. Keep in mind, that when you're panning with a Nikon lens, the lens will detect the pan and will help you in the opposite direction. So it doesn't do anything from horizontal left to right, but it will help any problems I have vertically. So if I'm going up and down a little bit, it'll help correct that. And that's, I think, what happened here. Again, the VR system in this lens is really good. And I was really surprised at the number of keepers I had at 800th of a second. I mean, probably only a third of them or so were sharp enough to meet my requirements for sharpness, but still, it was surprising to see any of them sharp. And I'm really glad that this was one of them because this was one of my favorite poses there. So once again, the, you know, I can't say for sure that the VR is what saved the day here. I may have just been, you know, lucky with the pan, but either way, I think it worked out really well. And I'm real happy about, again, the sharpness, the rendering, the background, everything here looks really, really nice. I think the lens did a great job in that department. And in case you're wondering, uh, wide, small again for the AF area on the Z9. Now this next image is that same spoonbill, but he had flown a little bit farther. And as you can see, he's got a nice dark background behind him. So the reason I included this is just for a couple of reasons. First, I wanted to show you that I did indeed get more than just one at 800th of a second. But more importantly, I wanted to show you how nice that background looks behind him. And the separation here to me is very striking. It seems like a very three-dimensional looking photo. And I think that's of course in part because of the dark background and the lighter subject, but at the same time, I also think that the separation that this lens brings for focus really makes a difference here. It just kind of decimates the detail in those backgrounds, and it really gives you that 3D look. This is our final shot from that first day, and this one is in here just to show you that you can crop with this lens. This is 
like a little bit beyond a DX crop. I know it says DX crop on the slide, but it's actually, I think, a little bit tighter than a DX crop. So even if you're not filling the frame, I mean, this lens has plenty of resolution to give you nice, sharp photos. And, you know, the other thing, I'm really glad, too, because I really love the pose. I love the little feet going each way. It looks like he's running over the tops of that of those grasses and reeds there. And I really like the dramatic wing position here, too. So I thought that was really cool. And, again, I love the rendering, love the sharpness. I, keep, I sound like a broken record, but these are the things that I'm liking about this lens. And, again, all of these were handheld. And I was surprised, even though the shoot lasted a while, I really didn't fatigue holding that lens. Normally, if I find a group of birds, I will stop what I'm doing, I'll grab the tripod, and I'll just use the tripod. I'm very comfortable on a tripod. I'm as good on a tripod as I am handheld most of the time. So for situations like this, normally it'd be a tripod. But in this case, it didn't even occur to me to grab it because I just wasn't having any kind of difficulty hand-holding this lens. So just some food for thought there with the 800. So that's the first day. Let's look at a few shots from the next day. Now, the next morning, we were out on an airboat, first thing in the morning, right at sunrise. And unfortunately, though, it was dark because there were still clouds everywhere. It was very, very cloudy that morning. And we're going along, looking for stuff. We went across the lake and we found a rookery where the birds were taking off and flying around. Unfortunately, again, super dark. So we weren't looking at like normal bird and flight shutter speeds. So I decided to try some slow shutter speed panning. And once again, and it's a combination, I'm sure, of the Z9 and this 800 PF together. But once again, I was very impressed with the lens. You know, I'm on a boat. And although we were kind of in a stable location there, we weren't like, you know, bobbing up and down or anything. You know, we're still on a boat. I'm standing up on the boat. I'm hand holding this lens and I'm able to do these really slow shutter speed panning shots. And this was my favorite, but I did get a few others that, you know, where the subject was easily recognizable like this. So, you know, again, very impressive the way this lens allows you to handhold in situations where you didn't really maybe think about hand holding 800 before. So, uh, again, I'm very, uh, it was very nice to use for this kind of work. Then a little bit later, we actually did see little patches of blue sky and we saw this eagle coming over. And this time I was basically on the water there, the boat's bobbing up and down and I'm able to handhold this lens. I'm standing up, I'm handholding this lens on the boat and you know, kind of tracking this eagle as it flies in. And it was a long distance track. He started way, way out there. I wasn't actually shooting, I was on him though. So I had the lens in hand for quite a while as he flew towards the camera. And then I ended up with this shot. I like this one about the best of the bunch. I don't normally do like birds against blue skies, but I think this one actually works out pretty well. Next, we have this guy. This is a different eagle. And we were going along a little channel and found him sitting on a old tree, as you can see here. And very, very cool shot. I really liked it, but the background was just kind of white clouds. So I thought it would be fun to go ahead and make this kind of more of a high key black and white shot. And once again, though, I am going to talk about the weight here. The weight of that lens really helped because I was able to handhold and wait for him to look at the camera. So that was a huge advantage. And again, I'm on a bobbing boat at this point. You know, other boats are going by. I'm standing there hand holding this thing. And this is not something I would typically think I could do with an 800 millimeter, but you know, with this lens, I was able to do it. So, and you know, worked out really, really well. The shutter speed is maybe a touch higher than I would normally do for a shot like this. I'd usually probably go to 1,000th of a second, but I also thought he might take off. So I was kind of prepared for both. And finally, I think this is kind of a fun one. We were driving along on the airboat. We were kind of heading back towards the dock actually. And there's a couple of these uh, great egrets flying, just kind of going along the wood line there. And in fact, I'll put a clip up right now so you could see what we were doing. You could see the egret in the background there flying. And I was photographing them as we were going. Now, this was shot just prior to the video clip that you saw. But we were moving in the boat at probably 15, 20 miles an hour. I, I was holding the lens handheld again. And I'm just shooting this egret as it's going along. And again, something that I think is a little more difficult to do with something like a 600 F4 and a teleconverter or a full 800 5.6. Not that you couldn't do it. But this lens just makes it a little bit easier. So once again, I was very impressed with that. And again, I love the separation I'm seeing between the subject and the background here. He really pops off of that photo. And the sharpness is fantastic, as good as what I see from my other prime lenses. So again, very, very happy with the overall performance of this lens. And I'm real happy with some of the things it seems to be allowing me to do that would have been difficult with something larger or heavier. So I'm definitely turning into a big fan of this lens. I can't wait to get mine. So I think that kind of wraps us up. Those are all the photos I wanted to talk about, but I think you probably see the underlying theme here that the size and weight makes it very manageable in the field. It lets you maneuver into tight positions and the rendering and sharpness are just outstanding. So 
Hopefully, if you were wondering about some of that stuff, you can see how it kind of applies in the field to actual photographs here. So at any rate, I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, if you are a Nikon Z shooter, to make sure you check out my Secrets to the Nikon Autofocus System book, the Mirrorless Edition. I now have the Z9 in there, and it covers everything you need to know to get the most from your Nikon Z series camera. We're going to look at everything from AF area modes to subject detection to just lots of tips and tricks for getting sharper photos using the Mirrorless System. So make sure you check it out. I know you're going to love it, and you can have it for less than the price of a lunch date. Talk about a no-brainer, right? Also, make sure you stop by the site and sign up for the free email newsletter so you never miss one of my videos, my reviews, my workshop opportunities, my blog posts, all that good stuff. So make sure you sign up for that today. And as always, I hope you'll share this video and remember to like, subscribe, and get notified. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.